Is Pradeep Pandyala your buddy, the anesthesiologist, the professor? Today I am going to discuss with you the anesthetic management of the most common surgery, caesarean section. Well, I would always prefer a single shot spine. Very simple and drugs required are there minimum. So there are no chances of any toxicity with the local anesthetics or anesthetic drug with a single shot spinal. Huge, huge advantage. The only disadvantage I foresee with spinal anesthesia, single anesthesia, single shot is the duration is very limited. If the surgeon is going to prolong it or convert it into hysterectomy or some other problems by the surgeon, then it could be disadvantages because it's, it gives you very limited time for surgery. And uh, there is no possibility of, uh, you know, increasing the sensory blockade. Like titrating abilities, not there in a single shot. Compared to that, the epidural is much better. And if you are already giving labor analgesia, that can be converted into normal, you know, epidural anesthesia for cesarean. That's a huge, huge advantage. In this, dura is not puncture. And uh, huge advantage, the sensory blockade can be titrated. Kids are increasing, or decreasing as per your choice. You know? The level can be maintained by you. Very easily, comfortably with the epidural catheter in situ. And uh, onset is definitely a bit slow. That's a disadvantage because if it is an emergency, you are giving epidural, the onset of action of the drug could be slow, even to the extent of 20 to 30 minutes and the surgeon may not be willing for that. You know, he becomes impatient, there could be fetal distress, some other problem. So that is the only disadvantage, otherwise epidural block is too good anesthetic technique for cesarean delivery. Okay, and um, other things like chances of local anesthetic anesthetic toxicity is also there in epidural. So that is the slight disadvantage but the post-operative analgesia is hugely beneficial in epidural. You can try a combined spinal epidural if you have the set. That's another huge advantage is because immediate it can be effective, rapid onset of action. So, it can be used for post-operative analgesia also. So, that's very good, really good. So, that is it. And if you are planning to give general anesthesia, I would always advise you to give regional block, regional neuraxial anesthetic technique over general anesthesia. But if it is a must general anesthesia, you have to be very, very careful giving the anesthesia. Like rapid sequence induction is preferred, okay. And uh, before going to that, uh, uh, a few words about positioning. You know, positioning is very important during your axial block. I always advise left lateral position. It's huge advantage because it reduces the vagal flexes, dizziness, diaphoresis, bradycardia, hypotension can be avoided by lateral position during spinal or epidural. And the uteropresental blood flow is very good uh, in lateral position. Whereas in sitting position, the huge, huge advantage is identifying the landmarks. Especially in an obese patient, it will be very difficult to give left lateral uh, spinal anesthesia, sitting would be better because obese people also you can identify mm, the landmarks easily. Sitting position should be definitely avoided if there is a cord prolapse or something like that. Uh, such state you should be avoided. Footling breach and or something you should avoid giving sitting position. It's better to do left lateral. Okay, that is it. And uh, always remember that drugs like 
sodium citrate, S2 blockers like ranitidine. Now ranitidine is being implicated for carcinogenic effects. <laughs> I don't know how far it is correct yet to be proved, but recent I have read few articles. The carcinogenic effects of ranitidine, S2 receptor blocker, which we have been using since last so many decades. Ranitidine, famotidine can be used or protein pump blockers like omeprazole can be used for all cesarean section, you know, aspiration to phylaxis. And it should be given 30 to 40 minutes before the proper surgery. It's very important. And most of the monitors you can do standard American society anesthesiologist monitoring should be placed. The invasive is really, very rarely required invasive monitoring. So these are the things you have to make sure that blood is adequately available. And uh, you must have the proper cross-matched blood at least two points before starting a cesarean. Never take a chance because uh, you can't predict which case will require blood postoperatively or intraoperatively. The uh, requirement of intraoperative or postoperative blood is very high in a case of uh, cesarean. And if at all, if, God forbid, it's a case of placenta previa or uh, a case of placenta accreta, chances of blood transfusion would be very, very high. Preferably, it should be reviewed with an MRI or USC uh, before starting the surgery. Well, I was talking about general anesthesia when you are doing anti uh, aspiration prophylaxis. You must give like metoclopramide 10 mg, ranitidine. You can give 30 mg intravenously and uh, preferably, as I said, 30 minutes before the surgery. And you must have a good IV line before starting a surgery. Make sure, preferably 18 gauge or 16 gauge if you can place, nothing like it. <coughs> and uh, patient should be positioned either supine or left lateral. Okay, antibiotic prophylaxis you may give around half an hour to one hour before surgery. And um, pre-oxygenation with 100% oxygen is a must with a tight fitting box for around 3 to 5 minutes. Okay, and or else you can give around five vital capacity breaths just before induction of anesthesia. Okay, uh, and there is a requirement of you know uh, pressure on the cricoid at the time of intubation. How much? There is something called Newton pressure. Force of 10 Newton should be applied when the patient is awake and should be increased to 30 Newton pressure when the patient loses consciousness. Very few people know this and you should always know that the force should be 10 Newton when the patient is awake and 30 Newton when the patient is unconscious during rapid sequence induction. Okay, and uh, drug either propofol or thiopental if you are giving propofol, it has to be 2 to 3 milligram. It's higher on the higher scale rather than 1.5 milligram. 2 to 3 milligram per kg. And succinyl only normally give 1 milligram per kg, but preferably give 1.5 milligram per kg. No chances taken. And thiopentin, you can give around 4 to 5 milligram per kg for induction. Okay, during rapid sequence induction, if you are giving. Rapid sequence. Normal, as well, normal induction, you don't have to give so much. Patient is intubated after 60 seconds and once antitubial tube is being secured, check it with capnography uh, markings in a graph or auscultation. Simple auscultation, bilateral, axillary auscultation, whether it is bilaterally equally heard 50-50% or not. Okay, and uh, normally you give isoflurane, desflurane, sevoflurane, sevoflurane with 100% oxygen. Now after the delivery you can include nitrous oxygen, nitrous oxide, okay. 
and hypertension is treated with vasopressors like uh, ephedrine, mephentine or phenylephrine and muscle relaxant of choice is could be becuronium or even the present rocuronium can be given and you have to give oxytocin oxytocin can be given immediately after the delivery of the child not before that okay and make sure that blood loss is well monitored and suitably replaced with blood itself and uh, extubation should be preferably when the patient is fully awake that is very important so this is that thanks for patient listening have a wonderful day this is colonel pradeep pandyala signing off for today until next time take care bye bye